The leatherback sea turtle gets its name from the thin layer of leathery skin that covers its shell. It is also the largest living turtle on the planet. The largest leatherback ever recorded weighed 2,019 pounds, and yet this behemoth lives on a diet composed almost entirely of jelly, or gelatinous zooplankton. These endangered sea turtles travel up to the Atlantic Canadian coast during the summer in search of a tasty treat. In fact, leatherback sea turtles are believed to get between 29 and 59 percent of all of the energy they need for the entire year from eating jellyfish in Canada. In order to better understand the link between jellyfish populations and leatherback movement, scientists enlisted the help of 104 citizen scientists to gather data on stranded jellyfish. The results could aid research on leatherback sea turtles for years to come. A citizen scientist is any member of the public who helps contribute to scientific studies and a larger base of knowledge. There are so many ways for people who do not work in a lab as a day job to contribute. It can be anything from keeping a record of the bumblebees they see, counting river herring in videos that scientists post online, or wandering a particular stretch of coastline identifying jellyfish. It is a fun way to stay in touch with nature, but also to make a difference in the world. While some of the tasks may seem small, when information from all of the citizen scientists is combined, you get a powerful tool that is invaluable to research. The citizen scientists volunteered either with Tallahassee University or the Canadian Sea Turtle Network and were assigned a stretch of beach in either Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, or Prince Edward Island. Each participant surveyed their stretch of beach once a week at low tide, counting the number of stranded jellyfish they found, identifying the species when possible, and measuring the diameter of the jellyfish bells or the circular body of the jellyfish. Before they started, each citizen scientist was mailed a special kit, including a jellyfish identification key, data sets, gloves, and a tape measure. People who did not participate in a weekly survey could email the project lead with pictures and descriptions of jellyfish that they had found on the beach. This was often how the scientists learned about some of the more rare species that washed ashore. The researchers combined the data collected by the citizen scientist with other longer running data sets. Trawl data from Fisheries and Oceans Canada was used to mark presence or absence of jellyfish caught in the trawl. They also marked the weight or biomass as an indicator of how many jellyfish were floating around. Because the number of jellyfish is believed to be affected by temperature and the number of phytoplankton available, sea surface temperature and chlorophyll, a measure of phytoplankton, were gathered from satellite data. They also tagged 11 leatherback sea turtles tracking their movements by satellite as they visited the area 19 times between 2004 and 2017. This helped the researchers determine the months when leatherbacks are looking for food in Canadian waters. They also factored in when leatherback sea turtles were spotted by people out and about called opportunistic sightings. The most commonly spotted jellyfish was the lion's mane jellyfish accounting for over 75% of the observations. This is good news given that the lion's mane jellyfish is an important food source of leatherback sea turtles. 77% of the jellyfish were found in July, with 63% coming in the second half of July. The lion's mane jellyfish was also most commonly found in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. The second largest category at 20.4% was tenophores, which unlike the lion's mane jellyfish are technically another genus comprised of gelatinous animals that do not sting. In all, 81% of jellyfish sightings were in July and August. While the data are interesting, the likelihood of finding stranded jellyfish went up significantly with volunteer effort. This makes sense. When more people are looking, it is more likely to find what is being looked for. This means that while the data can serve as a good glimpse into the seasonality of jellyfish, it is important to keep in mind that the trends may have something to do with the fact that the beaches lure more volunteers in the nicest months of July and August, as opposed to May or November. It seems that hungry leatherback sea turtles are following the jellyfish through Canadian waters. Of all of the leatherback sightings, most occurred in either July or August along the Scotian Shelf. Further north, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the leatherbacks were found most frequently in August and September. In the Scotian Shelf, 
Trends and sightings for leatherback turtles tended to reflect the number of lion's mane jellyfish sighted with a lag of about two weeks. However, in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the relationship between jellyfish and sea turtles was not as clear. Either way, leatherback sea turtles are detected in Canadian waters in the same months that higher numbers of jellyfish are recorded. Going forward, the efforts of these citizen scientists has helped establish a baseline for understanding jellyfish populations in the Atlantic waters of Canada. This is essential as scientists and lawmakers work to protect leatherback sea turtles, which have been declining in recent years. It is a wonderful example of how the combined effort of the public can be used to understand the natural world and how one person can make a difference, even just by walking up and down a beach. This post was originally made on August 26, 2019 by Kristen Azinga. It is titled, Are You Jelly? Citizen Scientists Find Jellyfish to Help Sea Turtles and featured a paper by Nordstrom et al. 2019 titled, Tracking Jellyfish and Leatherback Sea Turtles Seasonality Through Citizen Science Observers. This has been Ocean Bites Out Loud. Check out oceanbites.org for this post and other great posts. Thanks for listening.